Hello, I have Leo here from Zen Habits, and I'm really excited to have him on the show today. He is an amazing individual, and if you have not read zenhabits.net, I tell you go there right after you watch this and read because you will learn, be educated, and it will help you move your life forward because Leo is about taking action, and that's one of the reasons why I've read his blog for years and years. So welcome, Leo. Appreciate you having on the show. Thanks, Jason. It's an honor to be here. Yeah. Well, great. I want to get into the meat and the heart of the matter, which is mastering change, because that is really the sticking point. Because, you know, we've seen, we know people that love to read books, gone to a lecture or seen a movie, and they've had an aha moment. But then they woke up the next day and nothing was any different and nothing had changed. Or they started out with their New Year's resolution, going to the gym, and then by mid-January, end of January, they weren't taking action and going anymore. So I really want to get your philosophy behind how people can really master the art of change. Yeah. So, I mean, I totally understand that, that kind of like not taking action or, being, or struggling to stick with something for very long. That's where I was, as you know, in uh, 2005, when I had all these things I wanted to change about my life, and I couldn't make it happen. Uh, but I slowly started to change things one thing at a time. And so what I, one thing I learned about what, what you're asking about is that there is this resistance in us uh, to, you know, first of all, to, for initial action. So there, how do you overcome that? You procrastinate, you put it off. But then there's also a resistance. If you get going, after a while, maybe this changes in all the things that you imagined it to be. And so maybe a week or two into it, um, you know, going to the gym is not as fun and you don't feel as, you know, supermodel uh, good looking as, as you were hoping you would be after two weeks. And so that's discouraging. And so there's a resistance then. Like, then you just stop going because you're, you're getting discouraged. Uh, so I, the, the book actually is all about that, is how to overcome that resistance and where that resistance comes from. Uh, but one of the things that worked for me uh, that was, you know, I mean, it's, it sounds super obvious, but... Most people don't practice it, which is to do one change at a time and to do super small changes, like as small as possible. If you want to meditate for half an hour, that's great, but start with like two minutes. Um, and if that's too long, do it for a minute, you know? Um, and, you know, like one thing I told myself for, for running was just lace up your shoes and get out the door. And that made all the difference in the world because that was something that I couldn't say no to. So I overcame that resistance to just starting, you know, on those days when I was just kind of feeling tired. And once I got out the door, the resistance was overcome, and I felt like, you know, I felt like running a mile or two, and sometimes I would go longer. Um, so, yeah, you know, it, you in your mind, it's like, oh, I don't want to do that. But once you start doing it, the reality of it can be um, a lot better, and you, you'll be happy that you got started. So it's, it's all about overcoming the resistance, and I have a whole book of uh, tips on how to do that. Yeah, it's about breaking down the change into really small steps and taking it forward because that's, you know, for yeah. some people it's even planning the workout schedule the night before and laying out your clothes so yeah. you don't need to think too far ahead because that often gets really overwhelming and the next thing seeps in is procrastination. Kind of what, right. Talk about procrastination because that's a big issue that comes up. People just keep putting off the things that they really need to do in their life. Yeah, so I mean, what happens with procrastination really is, is like this not wanting to go into this place that you're afraid of being in, you know? So if it's writing, for example, or like you say, you know, going to the gym, a lot of times that's because in your mind, that's going to be the scary thing. And writing is scary because it's always going to be some uncomfortable place. And so like, we don't want to go into that uncomfortable, scary place. Like no one wants that. We want to be in a comfortable, safe place. But that's not a place for growth. I mean, you're going to, this comfortable, safe place actually is where you are right now, and you don't want to be there. You're there, you, you don't want to be there because there's some kind of pain. So you need to let that pain get you out of this place that you're used to, get you out of the rut, into a new place, which is going to be a little bit, you know, unknown, uncertain, a little bit of doubt. But, it, you know, that's okay. It's okay to be in a place of uncertainty and doubt. Um, that said, I found that having it in small doses, a small change that I talked about, is way better for this uncertainty and doubt. So if you're, you know, if you're um, wanting to write, instead of saying, I'm going to write my whole thesis today, um, you know, of course that can't be done in one day, but let's just say I'm going to work for 10 hours on a thesis. 
well, that's such a big uncomfortable task that you're you're probably not going to stick with it. You probably just put it off. But if you say, I'm going to go and write one sentence in my thesis right now, and um, that's that's something that's a little bit scary, but it's not so um, it's not such a huge thing that you can't overcome that. So the the resistance to discomfort can be overcome if you make the um, scariness like really small. Um, and it's it's it, and once you you see that you're okay in that, you can continue to repeat that little small uncomfortable change and then over time that becomes really easy um, so uh, you know like again writing for me is still uncomfortable but it's way easier than it was when I first started I didn't know what I was doing um, I've, I've become okay with a little bit of discomfort and my my kind of comfort zone into the discomfort has kind of grown over time so it's, it's gradual change that power of gradual change it's like it's really amazing it's changed my entire life because I made one small thing at a time I changed my diet from like junk food to uh, to a lot healthier by changing one little thing at a time instead of trying to change it all drastically at once. So yeah, procrastination can be overcome in small doses. So talk about fear because I know you just brought that up and about embracing yeah. fear because fear is really what holds people back. And yeah. a lot of times it's fear of failure and fear of rejection are two of the biggest fears that pop up. Can you talk yeah. about that? Because that's really... Um, behind a lot of the lack of change is the fear that goes on. Yeah, I, it's there's a, yeah fear is there's fear of failure, so we we're fear we're going to try it and then fail. Uh, fear of change sometimes sometimes you can be going into an uncomfortable place. Um, fear of like not knowing what you're doing and being like um, kind of confused. Like for me, taxes is one thing that brings up fear. <laughs> doing my taxes. Like, cause I to go there and I'm not good at it. You know, I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. There's so many different, you know, things to learn. And so you're in this place of confusion and that's scary. And so, yeah, fear actually is at the root of all of our, all of the things that are stopping us from procrastination to not changing your job. If you're in a, a job you don't like to not starting a new business, if that's what you want to do yep. to not changing your habits, uh, because you're afraid of the discomfort of exercise. Um, and uh, and so uh, you know, what, for me, what I look at is where where does that fear come from? And a lot of it is fear that we're not going to be good enough. Uh, so fear of failure is like I'm going to try this. I'm not going to be good enough to do it, or yep. I'm going to write something and people are not going to like it because I'm not a good enough writer. Uh, or I'm going to start a business and I'm going to fail because maybe you know maybe Jason can do it, but I can't. Uh, he's good enough and I'm not. Uh, so there's a lot of that, and I think that's a very natural thing: is this doubt, self doubt. Um, so it's not something to beat yourself up about if you have that, because you know I definitely have it. Even now, after having succeeded a lot of different things, um, I still have some self doubt. Uh, so what um, what I found is that there is this image that we have of ourselves. And this might be going a little too philosophical. <laughs> uh, there's a self image that we have. It's this mental image that we have, and what we want is to maintain that image of this good person. Right, and when there, we we think about something scary, is like that that might actually destroy this image. If I fail, now this image of, of me as a good person is now going to be attacked, and we defend that image at all costs. Um, you know, if someone insults us, it's be, the you know the, the problem is not the insult; it's the problem is that they are attacking our self image, um, and so that's really what the root of our fear is. And what I've learned is that you can let go of that image. If that image is stopping you, you can say, I don't need to be this perfect person because that perfect person doesn't really exist in reality. No. Um, you know, Jason might, might be a successful successful guy, but actually he's not perfect either. And the, the reality of Jason is much more varied than his perfection. Um, he's got some great things about him and some, you know, not so great things. He's got some successes and lots of failures. And if you look at the reality of anyone's life, it's got a wide variety of things. And so what, instead of being this narrow self-image of like, I need to be this perfect person and everyone to see me as great, say, you know what? I can be a lot of things. I can be good in this case and not so good at my taxes and not so good at writing. And that's okay because if I don't embrace this wider thing, then I'm going to be stuck in maintaining, preserving this image of myself as perfect and good which is not a real image in the first place. So yep. let go of that and just embrace the idea that you can be a lot more more things. And uh, I think you can 
overcome that fear. Now that might have gone a little too philosophical. Oh no, it's a great. I love <laughs> I love the discussion on that. So another really big challenge people have when it comes to making changes is motivation. And people complain they have lack of motivation. And one of the things I've found in successful people is they don't use the crutch of motivation to have to get things done. Because like Olympic athletes don't feel like they want to go and train seven days a week every single day. Yet they do it. So can you talk about and address motivation? Because I think that's a real key part of this change process for people. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think it is good to have motivation. I, I think that motivation can come from lots of different places. You talked about the Olympic athlete. I mean, that guy or woman is, is motivated because they want to succeed. They want to excel. Uh, maybe... Maybe it's for the gold medal, maybe it's for glory, but it also maybe it's just for this, pers- this feeling of personal accomplishment. Um, but I think there's that's that's this thing that's kind of out there and down the road. Like I'm going to get this glory later, and everything's going to be great once I succeed. That that tends to be not as good a motivator um, as being motivated in the moment by the activity itself, because um, like you have this idea of where you want to go, but you know you take the first step. And you're not there yet. You take the second step and the te- tenth step, and you're still not there yet. So, I mean, it takes a long time for you to get that positive feedback of being in the place you want to get to, right? So what I, I found is you need positive feedback, like, almost immediately. And so if I write, and I enjoy the process of writing, and I feel good about just having written something, that sense of personal accomplishment is there already, even if I haven't actually written a book yet. Uh, so just getting off my butt and, and doing something... It, to me, is, is a motivator because I instantly feel good about having done that. And so the, having the task or the, the habit or the activity itself be a reward is, to me, really a powerful motivator. So, like, you know, for running, if I want to go uh, create the habit of running, it's not because I'm going to run a marathon in two years from now. That's not going to be motivating enough. And it's not because I'm going to lose a bunch of weight. That's not going to happen after one run or ten even. Uh, I do it because the run itself is worthy of doing, and I enjoy it, and I feel invigorated, and I enjoy nature outside. And the only way to do that, the way that I discovered to do that, is instead of thinking of this thing that's going to happen for you in the future, turn your attention, um, using mindfulness, turn your attention into the here and now. And notice what's going on in your body and how that feels. Notice all the things around you and how beautiful those are and start to appreciate the things in the activity and in the moment. And that becomes, then your run becomes your meditation, you know, and that uh, I, to me is a rewarding activity in and of itself. Uh, so I think if you can find that, uh, then you're motivated to go out each time. You need to remember that when the resistance comes up and say, okay, I'm going to go out for my run, but um, I don't feel like it, but then you're like, but. Every time I do that, I feel awesome, so I'm going to go do that. Uh, so you kind of have to remember the reward that you get from that, that positive feedback that you get. Um, and don't believe yourself when you start to try and talk yourself out of it. There's a lot of, that's another thing. Um, there's motivation, but there's also this negative self-talk that's going on inside of us. Yes. Um, and so I'm sorry to switch topics on you. You asked a great question, but I, uh, I got sidetracked. But there's this thing that goes on inside of ourselves that starts to doubt ourselves or tries to rationalize getting out of this change, uh, tries to say, you know what, you don't need to do this, you know, or this is too hard, or you deserve a break, you deserve a reward. Um, and so, you know, again, taking the example of the run, the run is going to be great for me. I know it. It's going to be good for my health. I know I'm going to enjoy it. But right now I'm feeling the resistance, and my mind says, I don't want to go out there and be uncomfortable, I'd rather sit here on the computer and go on Facebook. And so you're like, well, that you know, is not a better option than running. But uh, what happens is your mind starts hap- working in, in the back of your head and starts saying, you know what, it's, it's okay to take a break this one time. You, you'll go out for a run tomorrow. You know, you deserve, you've worked hard. You, don't, you deserve a break and, and a rest. Um, or, you know what, it, it's, it's not worth doing. It's not worth putting yourself through all this um, torture. And so you start to rationalize, and what that is, what I found, is that there's this little kid inside of us that doesn't want to do hard work and doesn't want to go to uncomfortable places and just wants to be in its comfort zone and wants to get what it wants. 
And that kid is talking us out of doing all these great things and out of greatness, really. So you have to like realize that that kid's there because often it's in the back just making you do things or not do things. Realize that it's there, hear what it's saying, but don't follow it, don't believe it because it's just a little kid who's trying to get out of some discomfort, throwing a little tantrum. And you can yep. be the adult and say, you know what, you'll be okay. <laughs> this is going to be great and we're going we're gonna to love it. Yeah. So. Well, another topic I really wanted to talk about is, um, you know, really loving yourself first and putting yourself first because a lot of people don't and it gets them in unhealthy relationships and the inability to set boundaries and really move forward in your life. And that's a real challenge I see with the, a lot of people and also it's their inability to make change because they've refused yeah. to make time for themselves in order to actually move forward and change. And this can happen easily in anyone's life, you know, and I've seen this happen a lot in people who are in families or parents um, and not being able to find the time for themselves to move forward. But it happens, it can happen in anyone's life. So we can address that because I think that's a real critical part that that doesn't really get spoken about near as much um, on this yeah. topic. It's funny, I'm, I'm wrapping up my book and that's the chapter I'm writing right now. <laughs> uh, but it, that's such an important topic and I didn't realize how important it was for a long time when I started Zen Habits, I was writing about all these habit tips and I thought people were using them and, and um, changing their lives. And then I started coaching people one-on-one -on -one and in my, my program. And I, I'm like, what's going on? I'm giving them this great plan. And some people are following it. And it's great. But a lot of people just aren't following it. And I couldn't figure it out. So I had to like dig deeper and ask them why, what was going on. And what I found out was exactly what you're talking about. Is this thing that was holding them back was how they felt about themselves and how... They had all this not only self-doubt, but maybe they just didn't really have a good uh, feeling about themselves. Sometimes there was even self-hatred. Um, a lot of times it was just not trusting themselves. They had failed so many different times that now they didn't have any trust. It's just like if you were in a relationship with someone and they kept walking out on you, after a while you're not going to trust them to stick around. And so nope. that's what you've done with yourself. This relationship you have with yourself is you've walked out so many times because of resistance, because of discomfort, this little kid inside of you that you now don't trust yourself. And this lack of self-trust is where this fear of failure comes from. Um, you're like, I don't trust myself to, to succeed at this, so I'm not going to even do it. You just put it off. Or I don't, you know, you start a habit, but you don't really trust that you're going to stick to it. And so at the slightest resistance, you just, you know, don't do it because you don't think you're really going to stick with it for very long. So this relationship that we have with ourselves and this feeling that we have about ourselves is so important and it stops so many people from so many things, um, and really, the, it's, it's just like, let's say you, this, uh, you're in a relationship with someone else, and they kept walking out on you, you don't have this trust, how do you build this trust? You can't build it overnight. If this person says, oh, no, this time I'm serious, this time I'm going to stick around, you do not trust them just because they said that. So you, they stick around for a day, and now maybe there's a little more trust, and then the second day, and then the third day, and maybe after they stick around for a month or two, you start to build that trust back up. And so the trust, if you don't have this trust in yourself because of repeated failures, and I certainly didn't, it's going to take a little while. And that's okay. Because you can do this. What you need to do is build trust one thing at a time with really small, easy things to do. And if running is too hard for you, you fail with that so many times, you know, pick up a glass of water and drink that once a day at a certain time. Just say, I'm going to do, drink a glass of water. And that's so easy, you can't say no. Or I'll just say, all I'm going to do is when I'm done with my clothes, you know, take a shower, I put my clothes in a hamper. And just do that. And that's something that you can stick to for a month. And if you did that day after day, and you're really committed to making this change stick, and really commit to yourself to, to rebuilding this relationship, you're going to start to build that trust in yourself. And that will transform everything you'll start to be able to do the things that you couldn't do before because you now have this trust in yourself. Let's start with something super easy and start to build that up one day at a time. Great. I love that. You know, the next topic I want to talk about is relationships. And just I love the you know um, email I got on creating a social life and getting out there and meeting more people because I think that's a challenge for a lot of people. 
they don't really have abundance in their life and relationships, so they choose people out of default and out of scarcity, and it gets into a lot of unhealthy relationships, and they never find the people that are best suited for themselves. And I think a lot of people also don't really think through um, the relationships in life and realize that everything we do is with or through other people in our life. And I just want you to talk about, you know, yeah. relationships is kind of how you see it and the importance of, you know, socializing and doing all that. Oh, yeah. Um, such a big topic, and I know we only have a few minutes left. Yeah. So, um, I, I'm going to give you the highlights of what I believe. Uh, first of all, I've been lucky. I, I have you know, a great wife, some great kids, and they've been so supportive of everything I do. But if I didn't have them, what I, what I do now would be so much harder. So I, I, re- I actually wrote a post on this today about whether you're a lifting force uh, for people or a dragging force. And I think we surround ourselves with people sometimes just out of default. Um, just They just come into our lives and, and stick around, but um, sometimes they're a drag. And other people around us are lifting us up. And it's the people who we interact with the most. There's a quote I think you probably know that, that we're the sum or the product of the five people we yes. surround ourselves with the most. Something like that. Yes, Jim by Jim Rohn. Yep. Yeah, so I, I always forget the exact words, so I can't quote it, but... Uh, that's so true. It's like the people who are around us the most, if they're dragging us down, if they're, if they're full of unhealthy habits, if they don't do anything interesting in life, we're going to be like that. If we surround ourselves with the people who lift us up, who are, who are inspiring us with their own changes, who do healthy things, who are excited about life, that's going to infect us, basically. So you have to kind of start to look for those people and have them be a, a big influence on your life. Seek them out. And they, you can find that if they're not around you in your workplace or in your family or in your, your close cir- uh, social circle, circle, you can seek them out online. There's some amazing people online who you can surround yourself with, uh, make connections with. Um, you can find them in the community. One thing that really helped for me was to join a running club. And these are full of people who are like out there doing things. Yes. Um, and some of them are, are like just amazing people. Um, and there's all kinds of groups like that in the real world that you can meet up with and do some kind of common activity and talk with them while you're doing it. And it's, it's a great social uh, way to you know, find people who are going to lift you up. And I think it's incredibly important. I can't overstate the importance of that. Um, so find that and be that for other people. If you are that for other people, it's more likely that they're going to do that for you. So lift people up, uh, support their change, be the positive influence on their lives. And, um, and be their cheerleader. They'll maybe do that for you, too. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much for being on the show today. Can you tell people how they can get a hold of you, reach you, um, sure. and then more information about the book and where they should go to learn more about that and, and to get it when it's yeah. out? Yeah, so um, you can find me on zenhabits.net. Uh, actually, I have the .com now, too. Yeah. <laughs> so either one will work. Okay. Um, and, and that's my blog, and you can get uh, all my free articles there. And the book is also called Zen Habits. So this is a distillation of all the things I learned about habits and changing yourself and dealing with major life changes and dealing with struggle um, and and uh, all this stuff in one little slender volume. And it's going out on Kickstarter. Um, I don't know when this is coming out, but it'll probably be out by the time um, you're watching this. So go check it out um, on zenhabitsbook.com which is all about the book and the table of contents there and uh, shows you how to, to back it on Kickstarter. The book is only going to be sold on Kickstarter. It's going to be a print book that's going to be beautifully printed, not mass produced, um, it's limited edition. And there's also going to be an ebook version if you would rather do that. Uh, but you have to get it on Kickstarter. So it's going to be a 30-day campaign. And I really hope people do back it because I think it's an important book um, that I think is going to be a part of this movement of change that you and I are part of. Yes. I love you're doing on Kickstarter, too. That's something definitely different. So I think that's going to be an awesome opportunity for people to participate. So, Well, yeah. thanks a lot for being on the show today. And we will look forward to reading the book and participating on Kickstarter. So I encourage everyone to check out his website, get his email newsletter, check out all his other offerings on there, and then go on Kickstarter and get the book. You will definitely awesome. learn a lot out of it.